how small these guys are. They normally get bricked pretty bad. You might have to use a Dino Charge just to clear some things out of the way. Weapon Surge makes it so that if they do block with that Wolf Token or the Hunt Master of the Fells, see you later, Alligator. Yeah, so he's got this really aggressive, pushy build of Mono Red. No three drops, no Reckoners, no Pyre Heart Wolves. Yeah, and he only has he has three Hell Riders, and I like that as like a curve topper. I actually do. You know, if you're going to uh, if if you're going to actually play like an expensive card, I think a Hell Rider is probably the best one by a lot. Yeah. I think you just have to go with that approach. As Womble's going to be on the play, he's got an overgrown two, and Eleven has no one drop, which so is a bit surprising. How many emissaries does he have then? I would hope two. <laughs> Maybe that plus a Krenkos, who really doesn't have that either? Wow. Fire Fist Striker, Striker too with Mutavolt. Yeah, that's dead. Yeah, Fire Fist Striker plus Mutavolt, one of the cute combos. You can curve Cackler, Striker, and then three drop. You don't even need a Haze guy. You just shove with the Mutavolt and yep. have the trigger. Three mana here. Here's a Liliana of the Veil. So this is going to make no discard. Wow. Okay. So just Liliana, no activation. That is surprising to me. As Levin is going to play a Mountain, he's going to attack this. And then maybe we'll see a Pillar of Flame finish it off? Yeah, he's just going to pass the turn? He's likely saving Pillar of Flame to deal with the potential Hunt Master of the Falls. Okay. Prevent it from flipping and start to go crazy like it may do. No Liliana activation. That means Womble's Hand has to be like completely yeah, insane. absolutely. This, this thing has to be Thrag Tusk ridden for him not to want to activate that. That's the only thing that makes any sense here for me. I guess he drew as a Hell Rider hand based on the fact that he hasn't really done anything early. Yeah, but you know, one of the things with the red decks where, you know, I don't know what Drew's exact keep was, but I don't really like his keep either because he doesn't want to play a longer game against yeah. anybody. Here's a here's a Mutavolt going to kill Liliana. So Liliana got played and basically was a fog as Levin is going to just pass the turn back. Here's a Rakdos Kirun, and now Womble doesn't have the fifth land, but he has a fifth mana source. But I mean, if, with your experience of playing Mono Red, you were playing a very all-in version in Atlantic City where you top aided. You know, that's a deck that you that's a deck that you aggressively mulligan with, correct? Yeah, pretty aggressively. Uh, especially with this list with all these one drops, like a single mulligan, you know, not that big of an issue. You have a lot of nut frost to draw to. Yeah. And you know, the the plan of trying to go a little bit slower here with a card like Mutavol getting in for that, you know, that damage gets undone via yeah. Thragtus so easily. Mutavolt is kind of it's not a reason to keep a hand. It's still one of your lands. Yeah. You know, it might make you keep, you know, a land, a slightly land-heavy hand, but you still need all the other things. Cute interaction here. We've got Mutavolt getting activated by Burning Tree Emissary. Uh, Weapon Surge coming out after the Thragtusk block. Overloaded for plus one damage and killing the Thragtusk yep. with, with the first strike. So again, oh, Weapon Surge. Weapon Surge, oh, yeah. We'll bring that up yeah. on the screen for you guys. That's a card that gives plus one, plus oh and gets first strike for one red mana, and then if you overload it for a colorless and a red, it gives all of your creatures plus one, plus O, oh, and first strike. Yeah. Dude's got a pretty cool monocle. Yeah, I like it. I actually like the the, the javelin, yeah. as it were, more than the monocle, but to each their own. I actually like the weapon that he's surging. Oh, yeah. Looks like so, we're going to, are we going to get a beast token? I hope we're getting a beast token if we're at Womble. Looks like there we go. There we go, turtle beast. It's like Drew's hand is just a lot of lands. That's what it feels like. Yeah, you see Womble's hand. He has a Thragtusk. He has a Pillar of Flame. It looks like he has a Bonfire the Dam, too. Pillar going to take care of that Burning Tree Emissary. Thragtusk going to get him five more life, put him to 23. Might see an attack with a Beast Token, too. Just passing. Yep. You know, he's going to get ahead very soon. There's no need for him to potentially take five or so damage off of something. You know, maybe like a Lightning Baller and a Fire Fist Striker. Some kind of combo like that. Yeah. Lightning Ball is a card that's notably absent from Dream's deck that I've always liked in these decks. Yeah, I mean, you, I, you like it for the fact that it just adds up damage and just pushes your advantage more, right? Well, I also like it because it lets you, you know, similar to what Mutavolt was doing in those curves, it lets you have these kind of funny curves where you get to trigger, you know, it used to be Pyro Art Wolf, now Fire Fist Striker, uh, a bit earlier than you normally would. Okay. Can you afford to play? Can you afford to play Lightning Baller? And Fire for Striker in the same deck? I don't know. If Young Pyromancer is that good, I don't know if you can. Okay. If you're, like, Young Pyromancer and Krenko's Command definitely take up the slots that it would normally be in. So Hellrider coming down for Drew. Womble at a very solid 23 life. He has six lands right now, and he's going to attack here with a Thraxus wow. and the Beast token, so he's going to start getting some damage in. And if he has a seventh land for the Bonfire the damage in his hand, he gets to clear everything away, but he does not. He has an abrupt decay, so Hellrider's going to be able to get in some damage here. But 
Don't forget about that Rakdos Kieran that's in the back row. And Drew does not have any Searing Spears to deal with that fourth block. Mm -mm. He's going to get his triggers. Oh, yes. Here's Mutavolts being activated. Rakdos Cackler going to bite the dust to Abrupt Decay. Big interaction, too, to keep in mind with Abrupt Decay is that it actually can't kill Mutavolt. Nope. Because it is a land. Yeah. Uh, we've seen that a bit in Modern and a bit in Legacy, too, with Manlands not dying. Mm -hmm. Occasional Mistress Factory and Legacy and Modern, a lot of uh, Raging Ravines and Celestial Kanas and Ink Moth Nexus yep. not dying to Abrupt Decay. Yep. That was part of the reason I did not like it at Pro Tour Return of Ravnica, the fact yeah. that it could not kill Ink Moth Nexus, Blink Moth Nexus, or Raging Ravine. Yeah, I left all of my opponents having Erupt Decay. Yeah, I, just awesome. play, I played Success 0 ever. in the 75 on the Jun deck. Okay, Key Rune gonna block down this Hell Rider. Drew has a Diana Charge in his hand, it looks like. He's baiting where to fire it off, I think. Mm, it looks like it is gonna. No, it's just gonna be a couple of guys. It's gonna be a Foundry Street Denizen, and Pillar Flame gonna take care of the Rakdos Key Rune. And just going to pass the turn back. I mean, severely, severely outclassed right now on the board is Levin. And yeah. with Womble having a uh, Bonfire of the Damned in his hand as well, he's going to draw a card, fix his library. Draws a, that looks like a Farseek, but I'm not positive. Yeah, it's probably one of the uh, promo ones. Yeah. In for eight yet again. Going to put Levin down to four. Oh, that's a, that's a new promo scavenging. Oozing okay. Yeah, and this is like a real showcase of why this card is so good. It's so uh, much better than Ground yeah, Seal. Yeah. You know, it's a 5-5 five five right now with all these activations. 5-5 five five gains through life. It's basically a Thrag Tusk at this point in the game. Mm -hmm. All right, you win this argument. <laughs> you know, I, so I've got my article I've written over here. And I was like, yeah, I'm not sure about scavenging. I was just like watching two games. But I'm like, oh my gosh, this card is just as good as I ever remember it being Legacy. I just want to play it all day long. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's really good. I mean, it, it was such, it was really really good legacy. It, it, and I don't even think it's design. I don't even think it's worse now. It's just like Maverick just isn't very good right now in legacy. Yeah, it's uh, Deathrite Shaman kind of does the same thing. Yeah. You don't need like a scavenger use and a Deathrite Shaman. Yeah. But yeah, I'm. I mean, they're both in this format, but I know which one I'm going to be casting. I am, am now super excited to play with this card in modern in this format, just anywhere I can. Mm -hmm. Again. It's uh, about a year ago, I was like, this is the card that will fix modern, it'll be awesome. And I'm just looking at it now, I'm like, oh my gosh, I get to do this? It's so great. So Scavenging Goose is going to gobble up three creatures in Levin's graveyard. He's going to go up to 19, 5-5 five, five in the house. As you mentioned, he can have the opportunity to block. The, the interesting thing here for Drew is, like, I don't think he can win this game. So, like, I wouldn't want to show any more cards. Like, if he had Dino Charge in his hand, I would not want to show that. Yeah, absolutely not. Like, I have no interest in letting my opponent know... They're like, they need to keep everything off the board that I have at all time. And if you're, it, it, I don't want Levin to know also that, like, if you're Womble, you need to be mulliganing for, like, Bonfire the Damned. And he is actually going to cast Dyna Charge. And my problem with this is, like, how much damage is he dealing? Like, is this a game winning play? Like, no. is this something that's going to get him back in the game? Can he beat a Scavenging Ooze? Can he actually beat one of those? Not right now. Yeah. You could have beat it, like, five turns ago, but not today. I just feel like I, I feel like this is a situation where giving up the information is detrimental to Drew. All it's yeah. doing is helping Ed. Well, to be fair, if you see Weapon Surge, you might already know about that one. Maybe, Maybe but there's no guarantee. I mean, he knows now. Yeah, you don't know how pe you don't know how like four people are. <laughs> the, is he gonna show birth miracle? Him. Yeah, no, I like that one. Yep. You don't know how informed people are about this particular deck list. Like, yes, yes, Drew is 4 0. Yes, he's a big name player, so maybe some people were watching him play, that sort of thing. But, like, if, if you're not familiar with Drew, if you're not familiar with this deck, you probably don't have a very good idea of what's going on. So, by showing Dyna Charts and revealing kind of what the pieces to the puzzle are for your deck, you may be getting a little information um, for the next two games as Womble's going to win game number one over Levin. We'll take a look at Levin's sideboard first because he's going to be on the play. The obvious one that's in his sideboard, the one that he bought before the tournament, he told me. Very he's, excited about it. Yeah, he's going to sideboard four of these in. Well, first of all, he boards up to two more mutable. It's yep. a full play set. It's 22 lands. <laughs> Why is he going up to 22 lands? What's he boarding in? He's got a four drop. Yeah. Burning Earth. Yeah, this is the one that Jun does not want to play against. Pat Cox, if you follow him on Twitter, he said, hey, this morning he tweeted, hey, what's the best answer for Burning Earth for a Jun deck? And everyone was like, uh, I think, yeah, it's like, I think Golgari Charm, maybe. 
or, and someone else said it's reworking your mana base, and he's like, I don't have enough time for that. So. Yeah, I think he made a comment about, uh, like, he's like, 2-0, last Rana Red opponent didn't have Burning Earth. I was just saying, yeah, that card is, there are zero basics in this deck. Yes. Zero. That's and correct. There are 18 in Drew's deck. This is the one-sided mana bar you've always wanted. Yeah. yeah. And he's boarding up to enough lands to be able to cast it reliably with two more Muta Vaults, which is a nice... I think that's good deck building, too, because yeah. now you're boarding in two more mana lands, so you're actually up to four mana lands. Gives you enough yeah. lands to cast your it's, burning, your burning earth, and enough threats in your deck. Yeah, you're, it's awesome because you're not actually losing any sort of threat density by boarding in Muta Vault. Mm -hmm. You're actually going up on threat density for because you're probably boarding out you know, some of your Dino Charges yep. here. It might actually be that Drew is trying to... Show the Dino Charge and you just board it out. Because against Gun, I don't think you necessarily want that card. I could see that being the case, actually, yeah. Yeah, it's like, put the fear in him, just send it away. Sure. I like that. Um, there's some Skull Cracks here I don't want those. I don't want Mizium Mortars. I don't even like Mark and Mutiny that much. And then he's got Electric Ring and Sideboard, which is pretty bad here. Yeah. Really, I'm looking at the Sideboard, and it's like, two Mizium Mortars, three Electric Rings for Aggro Mirrors, two, mm -hmm. Burning Earth, or two Mutable Balls for Burning Earths, mm -hmm. and three Blanks. I don't, I, there are four Blanks. I don't. I don't like Skullcrack, I don't like Mark Immunity against anything. Yeah. I think he's got an e I think he's got an easy six to board in and four yeah. burning or two mutable. Sideboards out as you said, maybe the four dino charges, like a weapon surge and like a mystery card, pillar of flame, not I, exactly I like exciting. The weapon surge, the weapon okay. surge battles through drag costs. Okay, sure. So I probably board out like uh two pillars. Yeah, I think that's well, completely reasonable. Not even that good. No, it's it just really takes not. out ooze, takes out uh Hunt Master. And, and it may take out ooze. Like well, there's no guarantee. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Uh taking a look at Ed's sideboard here. What's he got against aggro decks? Well, he's starting two scavenging uses and he's bringing in two more. He's also got two more copies of Tragic Slip to go with his two in his main deck. Two Duress, two Rorkthar, not so great. Two Garrick Primal Hunters, not so great either. He's got an Underworld Connection, the Curse of Deathsold. Meh. That, Curse of Deathsold is scary, man. It's really good against Drew's deck if he can get the five mana, but if Drew plays a Burning Earth, you're gonna, are you going to take five to cast Curse of Deathsold? Well, if you aren't dead, you'll probably kill him with it. Okay. All okay. right. Actually, Drew's deck has... Let's see... Rakdos Cackler, Emissary, three Hellriders, and four Mutables. His other 20 creatures or so die to Curse. So right. you gotta you lock him out a little bit. Just, just a little. Just a little. Then he's got one Pillar of Flame, an additional Liliana of the Veil. Hopefully we'll see an activation of Liliana of the Veil in, the, in this game from Ed Womble. But the big I, card that's interesting here is Duress. And the reason, I think that's, the, the reason I think that's kind of interesting is simply because Womble is so weak to Burning Earth that he might have to take a desperate measure yeah. like this and board in duress to be able to, to nab one. That's actually one of the downsides of this list is that you have other duress targets, so they're actually incentivized to bring it in. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're just like a traditional moderate red fire heart wolf bar Reckoner style stylist with burning earth, you could just duress. Don't have it this game. Nice card. Yep. So here's a tragic slip to take care of the Foundry Street Denizen. Gonna take two now so he doesn't take two or potentially four later. So gonna go down to 18 is Wombo, takes care of that. Levin draws his card for the turn. Here's a mountain. There's another Foundry Denizen. Passes the turn. And you see the Burning Earth in his hand already. I think any hand that he has Burning Earth and like two or three lands is an immediate keep. Mm -hmm. I think the best part of Burning Earth in his, uh, these decks was a Mark Immunity. Yep. Uh, I like Burning Earth a lot because, or compared to Mana Barbs in the old days, because um, multiple Burning Earth actually does something. Yeah. Like, you aren't just like, oh my gosh, I'm paying four life to play my second one. It's just like, yeah, okay, here's a second one, deal with it. Yep. Wobble well, missing a land drop. Yeah, missing Jeez. a land drop. And Drew cannot slam down Burning Earth fast enough. So, Burning Tremissary gets in for two. Womble draws a Kessig Wolf Run. In case you're wondering at home, that is non-basic. <laughs> and going to pass the turn back. So, Levin is sitting pretty right now. He has two lands and a Mark of Mutiny in his hand. Putrefy going to take down that. You're going to have to take three to do that, Ed. Gosh, which that he does good. do. Oh, I want to do this to people. I want to watch the look on other people's faces <laughs> as I do this to people. Levin draws, or excuse me, Wobble draws his card for the turn. It's a stomping ground. Oh. That's going to play, come to play tap. He has a hot match of the Fells in his hand. <laughs> Not interested in casting that as Levin is flooding out. He has nothing. As Wobble's going to take four, actually only take two, yeah. because of hot master the trigger. Let's go, Levin. So Levin needs to get some sort of offense because, yes, he does have Burning Earth. But he needs to be able to actually back that up with something. Yeah, this Hunt Master could just go all the way. It is six power. Wow, another mountain wow. and passes the turn back. Hunt Master's going to flip. Gonna deal 11 2, gonna put him down to 18. Far seek the draw. In for six comes Womble. Yeah, he's just not gonna cast spells anymore, I think. 
Yep, he's just gonna pass the turn back. Levin gonna draw a card. Another mountain passes the turn back. Unreal. Womble comes in for six more. Gonna put Levin down to six. He's gonna draw a card. It's another burning earth. Wow. And he just passes the turn back. Womble draws his card, attacks, and Levin is going to extend the hand. So Ed Wobble misses his third land drop. Levin has the Burning Earth hand, but he draws all lands in that game and ends up losing. He does not look very happy. About I that. would not be very happy about losing that game either, as Ed Wobble is going to win the match two games to zero. Jun defeats Mono Red, where Drew, I think, keeps a perfectly reasonable hand, yeah. almost like a perfect hand after sideboard, excluding Immutavault, and ends up losing. Yeah, he did not draw any of his Immutavaults. It was all the mountains that game. Yeah. Yeah. No Muta Vaults, draws a Burning Earth, no creatures. First yep. three creatures are taken care of, and that's it. You can see two duresses and a curse of yep. Vessel came in. Yep. That Womble was uh, very aware that uh, this Burning Earth would get him very well. Yeah, I mean, that's a frustrating loss for anybody. You can see Levin is a little bit frustrated by that loss, and I would be too, where, you know, I think that game one, I don't think Drew's Keep was very good. Um, didn't really get to play or interact with him the way that he wanted to. 